What is up, you guys? Thank you for stopping by Galadon Gaming. It has been a crazy, thrill-filled, up and down roller coaster ride of a first tournament week in Clash Royale. And I have to say, we've seen a few standouts so far, and I wanted to give a big shout out to Electrify from Full Attack, who has been dominating tournaments left and right. And we did sort of expect to see this. Certain players were going to place really highly in these tournaments over and over again and Electrify has done just that in many of the live streamed tournaments over the past tournament week. Electrify has had amazing finishes and as we show some of his replays from trophy hunting, we are going to take a look at his finishes on the right hand side here. You can see the Wizera Twitch 600 person tournament where he finished 6th and that is not anywhere near as well as he's done. He's won several tournaments, and we will show those on the right-hand side as we move forward. Electrify also probably pretty much responsible for the proliferation of Sparky Dex, a much hated unit, but Electrify using it very, very well. And because so many of his battles have been live streamed in front of thousands or tens of thousands of viewers, so many other people are now trying to use this exact same deck or very, very similar variations. But again, like I've said so many times before, it's only a certain percentage about the deck and the rest about the player. Maybe one third deck, two thirds how you use it. And Electrify has been, well, pardon the pun, but electrifying his opponents with the Sparky blasting towers left and right, just like that. Sparky getting to the tower and well, he's just gonna overrun this guy, really pretty much giving up at this point. He can't stop him. And there is a quick three crowned level nine Electrify taking down a level 10 player. But if you thought that was bad, check out level nine Electrify facing a level 13 player. Now, of course, this other opponent here has the bowler, kind of an experimental unit at this stage in the game. But nonetheless, a level 13 against a level 9, I don't think I've ever seen the lower level player win. You can practically just face roll and win the game right here. But the Sparky, again, if it's not effectively countered, is going to annihilate troops all over the place. And as Electrify is showing, you don't always need to have a meat shield in front of that Sparky early on. Right there, Sparky is going to do most of the work getting this giant out of the way. The miner deployed on the bridge, the ice wizard as well, and Sparky is now going to continue to move forward. And again, Electrify choosing not to drop the giant in front of this Sparky, rather just letting it do its work on the bowler before it finally does go down. But that was a huge elixir value right there for that one Sparky taking out so many units down that left lane. Now, of course, because of the higher level cards, Electrify is very far behind in this battle right now. A lot of damage on that left tower, and he's just barely touched his opponent's tower. But that is the beauty of the Sparky card. No other unit in the game can put out this much damage in such a short period of time. And for some reason, with Electrify's replays, we see this over and over and over again. He will go down 1-0 early on. And a situation like this, a lot of players would pretty much be like, at yeah, GG, the guy's four levels higher. He's got almost no hit points on either tower. But look at the size of the push from Electrify down the left-hand lane. No chance to stop this. Just completely overwhelming that tower. Dual Sparkies moving forward. And again, look at the right tower of Electrify in big trouble, but he doesn't care. He has two Sparkies converging on the King's Tower. And yes, we are going to witness another three crown before this guy knew it. He just got annihilated and taken down 3-1. So we will continue to watch Electrify's replays as we try, well, some of you anyway, try to study exactly what he is doing right. Now, I've done this before with Will C, those guys with the Hog Smoke deck. They basically taught me how to get it done, those guys from In the Light. I watched a live stream where they were playing and he was talking through his strategy and just watching the way they use the cards, you see Electrify not always having to drop a Sparky and then a giant right in front of the Sparky, using the Sparky on defense early on and then letting that push put itself together later in the battle, sometimes for huge comebacks, those big three crown wins. 
And so I figured let's show a little more gameplay than maybe we do in an average episode just so people can see. Check out the value right there of that Sparky just annihilating all of those other units. The Zap Spell not getting the job done. Now again, Sparky, for the amount of Elixir that Electrify has spent, is just getting a monstrous amount of value. Started out on defense, then he slips in the Giant right at the river. He loves the Ice Wizard as well. And check it out, the Sparky is still alive. It is going to, well, okay, not quite get a shot off that time. Poor Electrify is crying. But you can see that more often than not, that exact strategy is succeeding. And just for a split second right there, it looked like Electrify's Sparky was going to wipe out that tower. And I'm imagining that most of the time he does get through right there. And that is the big difference. And that's why he is so high. That's why, hey, he's passed 4,000 trophies as a level 9. That is incredible. And it's not just due to highly leveled certain cards. It is due to, obviously, very solid strategy right here against the level 10. The princess finishes off that right lane tower that was already badly crippled. The hog rider moving in. There is another tournament win in Crucial's big tournament. You can see that Electrify took first place. There is that big, beautiful first place tournament chest. Now, personally, I feel like the Clash Royale team should add something, some sort of badge of honor for players who win tournaments that are say 500 players and above, like some sort of little medal or trophy in a trophy case or display, even a ribbon that goes on your profile. Ideally, it would go like next to your name so that people could see maybe if you'd won more than one big tournament, they could see that next to your name whenever they battled you in a trophy match or even in another tournament match. Imagine the intimidation factor should you know for some reason that the opponent you're facing in a tournament has previously won a 800, a 600, or even a 1,000 player tournament. Right here, again, Electrify's Sparky has definitely electrocuted that tower. A 2-0 lead, and it looks like it's another three crown win for Electrify yet again just overwhelming his opponents, the Giants and the Sparkies, so often getting right through to the King's Tower. So Electrify making it look easy again and again and again, but this is really like watching game tapes. If you are a football player, you go back before the big game and you watch these other replays and you pick up on strategies, and I would say this is definitely something you could pick up on with a lot of practice, but again, Electrify has a way of making this look way easier than it actually is because solid players can definitely counter a Sparky, although for some reason in tournaments, they are not having a lot of luck in preventing Electrify Sparky from electrifying their towers. All right, so we will move on to another battle. This time the opponent also has the Miner trying to get it in there after that Elixir Collector, but Electrify anticipated that, dropped the Goblins and the Ice Wizard, and it looks like maybe that Miner got one shot off. I do like this usage of the Miner though, using it to take down the Princess. I also feel like the Goblin Barrel could work for that as well. New counters to the Princess, of course, the Log. Hashtag love the Log. I wish I had a Log. I still don't have a Log. That's a future episode though. I'm gonna buy super magical chests until I get a log, and it could be one of the most expensive episodes ever. But I want a log. Somebody give Galadon a log. Okay, stop about the log already. Anyway, let's move on to the rest of this battle. Another miner going after Electrify's elixir pump, but here comes Sparky. Watch out down the right lane. Sparky is going to blast that princess into Never Never Land. There she goes. She no longer exists. Check out on the right-hand side another win. That was an 800. That was Electrify's win in Beaker's Labs tournament, taking first place in an 800-person tournament. All right, so this time Sparky does fall, but not before it got several different troops out of the way. Again, it's all about elixir trading. You don't necessarily have to get the Sparky all the way to the tower every single time. If you can drop Sparky, spend that six elixir and take out double that in troops, then you are doing well. You're well on your way to winning the battle simply because of the amount of elixir that you're going to have over your opponent. And I feel like that's what we are seeing repeatedly from Electrify is that he is flexible in doing the damage to the towers. It does not necessarily have to be the Sparky every time that blasts these towers out of the way. It can be the Sparky that does a lot of the groundwork clearing the way. And that giant, a surprisingly sneaky card, 
really good at taking a lot of hit points out of a tower. Right here, you can see the giant doesn't quite get there. The Sparky is going to fall again. So this player is stuffing Electrify's pushes one after the other and working on Electrify's left tower. And once again, we see Electrify well behind with the last 10 seconds of this battle about to click off. But check it out. Here comes a solid push, and this time there is no other structure to get in the way, no cannon. There is Sparky and the Giant both on the tower, and as it clicks into overtime, one second into OT, Electrify Giant Sparky take that tower from super healthy to a memory. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to one more replay from Electrify, and this is one of my favorite replays that I've seen from him recently. One of the best comebacks I've seen in a long, long time. So again, it starts out with Electrify facing a higher level player. He's used to that, we're used to that by now after all of these replays. Just one level though, so it's almost like this player's at a disadvantage. If they knew who they were facing, they would wish that they were at least two levels higher, maybe even three. I don't know if I would want to face Electrify as a level 13, but I know I would certainly start saving my Zap spell, and I think that is the key for facing Sparky. You oftentimes, especially say with Hog Cycle decks, Minor decks, you want to use that Zap spell offensively. You want to stop those little units that are harassing your Minor, that are going after your Hog Rider. But as soon as you see your opponent has a Sparky as Electrify loses the tower, no big deal, he'll come back. You want to definitely start to conserve that Zap spell because it's critical and it's such a great use to get that down and stop that Sparky and then drop another unit or units in like a Valkyrie, like Barbarians that can take down Sparky, even a mini P.E.K.K.A. before it gets a chance to recharge. So Electrify doesn't look good right here. His King's Tower is well below half health. His left tower is almost down. His right tower is a distant memory, yet he of course is not going to give up. And surprisingly enough to his opponent, Duel Master here, it is going to be a huge comeback that Electrify is just about to put together. And the funny thing for me is when I see a player drop a Sparky at the very back like that, it's such a slow unit. It almost isn't instilling a sense of panic or urgency because it's so far away. You've got so much time to save up so much elixir. But the problem is you've got to get some hard counters in there because Sparky is going to annihilate just about everything in its path. Here you've got that giant skeleton, also a Valkyrie in there. So Sparky does survive because of the princess. Now the bomb, of course, from the skeleton gets the job done, but check it out in the meantime, like I talked about in the last replay, who needs Sparky? The giant is doing the bulk of the work and that tower is history. This game is tied with 43 seconds left. Another three Musketeers heading on their way, but Sparky is there to answer the pair on the left this time. Working on the Valkyrie first, Valkyrie never gets a shot on the Sparky. Sparky now going to finish off the Three Musketeers. And now the Miner put it in there trying to stop Sparky and not going to happen. Sparky with about seven hit points left probably is going to get to the Fire Spirits. And now, once again, ignoring the Hog Rider, it takes down the tower. The Hog Rider distracted, gets over to the Elixir Collector. Time is going to count down and somehow so improbable the miner doesn't get in there anticipating the miner the sparky does it again electrify with an electrifying win so exciting to watch him win i hope you guys get a chance to watch him in a big tournament you know that he is trying to get into as many as he can he has won over 15,000 cards in tournaments so far Thank you, you guys. I hope you guys are getting into tournaments. If you're not, check me out on Mob Crush. I am running tournaments every single day. Thank you, as always, for sticking around all the way to the end of this slightly extended episode. I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Please do hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe for daily Clash content, and I hope to see every last one of you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. They wish that they were least, at least, at least, 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 least. Talk about the intent, 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 subscribe, 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 subsc